Is it doing? Is it green? It's green. Cool. That means I'm on. Good morning. It's totally not morning anymore, but that's okay. I'm gonna say good morning anyway. It's um, 12.22 here in Las Vegas, and I haven't been up for very long, so I'm still drinking my coffee, and I'm starting to, uh, like, let get thoughts in my mind that are coherent. But um, I've spent this whole week working on a new augment for the Shibon project. Uh, I've mentioned in my videos that this is the one for the neck, and I'm super excited about this one because it's um, it's new. Like I've been doing a bunch of old stuff lately, and um, it'll be nice to completely visit a new headspace and nurture some new ideas. So uh, I've been doing that so far. I think I technically started really meditating on this augment a week ago, but I only since Monday started actually messing around with uh, doing CAD and printing out some preliminary test fixture dues and I've done some molding because um, this augment involves suction cups. It involves sucking because it's a neck augment, right? So I'm trying to cast, mold, cr create the perfect uh, suction cup for use on the neck that actually feels like lips, I guess. Um, whatever it is about um, someone kissing your neck or sucking on your neck that feels pleasurable, I'm trying to replicate that sensation. Um, preferably with a little bit of suction, but not so much that you actually get a hickey, because nobody, nobody wants a hickey, right? You just want to feel like you're getting a hickey. So I'm going to figure out exactly how much um, suck force, we'll call it suck force, um, <laughs> drink your coffee, Sarah, um, how much suck force it takes to create the um, hickey sensation without leaving the actual hickey, because we don't want to mar up my neck. I don't want to mar up my neck. Uh, oh, there's people here. Yay! Cool, I'm not talking to an empty room anymore. Cool. Hi, guys. Hi, Joshua. Hi, D. Croc. Hi, Asu Aswan? Aswan? Sancho? Hi! Hello, Spain! Welcome, welcome to the, uh, the morning stream. Hello, Michael. Good morning. How are you doing? Nice of you to join me on this, this Thursday day. Cool. I'm doing all right. How are you guys doing? Whatever time of day it is, wherever wherever you are in the world, how is your day going? I hope, hopefully it's good. Like, it seems like it's starting to warm up in most, most parts of the world, minus the Midwest. Some of my friends have been telling me that they're, they're getting snow still. Like, this super secret snow force um, hit them, and they, they got inches of more snow in April, which is, um, very unfortunate. If you happen to be in that part of the world, then, I don't know, I, I'm sending my, my love out to you. Because I can only imagine how crappy that would feel right now. To, like, want to be putting your shorts on and your flip-flops and then get hit with a snowstorm. Suck! Isn't that more like being tickled, meaning it's more about the surprise than the suck? Hmm. We can debate this. You might find that uh, even a gentle vacuum will create a hickey mark over a long enough time or enough repetitions. Yes. Um, cue yet one? Quiet one? Quiet one? You're right. Um, I think one of my friends here in Vegas actually suggested the same thing, like um, light repetition actually feels better because um, you, you can feel the repeated like release and then pull of the suction on the skin uh, and it, it does leave the desired kind of like pink ring that kind of goes away after a few seconds but it also feels good too uh, for the, uh, the suction to kind of pulsate a little bit and I've only simulated this with a syringe so far um, I made this little test fixture um, on Tuesday, so I've been I've been casting this part right here, which is basically like a um, it's a kind of like an octopus's suction cup, 
and there's silicone tube connected to a syringe and when you put this on your skin and pull on the the plunger it creates as much suction as you'd need to leave potentially a hickey on your skin amazingly it just kind of works um let's see James Driscoll uh rain in Oregon I'm, rain is nice. Like, I'd take rain. Just as long as it's, like, a spring rain. Aw. Uh, Mr. Mr. Cloud... Cloud Lion? Productive? Getting tired already, though? So am I, and I just got up. So I'm in the same boat with you. I'm sorry, my, my vision is so poopy. I'm like, oh, I can't read any of this. Aw, uh, it's cold. Aw, uh, good thanks. The weather has been amazing in England. Cool. I'm glad the weather is good there. I wish everybody good weather. I think it affects the mood. When I wake up and it's crappy here, it definitely puts a damper on my my spirits. Therapeutic cupping. I mean, honestly, the suck is very minimal. It's the warmth of the close body surprise of not knowing exactly where it's landing and the feeling of the lips. See, this is funny. Um, one of the things that I do in the spring here, um, or if, at least the last couple of years, we uh, we inflate a kiddie pool for the summer and in our uh, patio, and we sit outside and we'll we'll drink and chat all night. And last year, while I was working on kind of getting this project off the ground, uh, we got into many different discussions about physical sensation, and I think that I've come to kind of accept that. Up until this point, like for Shibon, I've been making these augments, and I'm focusing on both the the uh, the sensing some some bio data from my my body, like whether that's my heart rate or uh, my my heat, like the the temperature of my skin. Um, I'm sensing something from me in order to trigger some sort of performative mechanical thing, and it doesn't necessarily have to stimulate me as the user in any way. Um, it's just sort of fun if it does. And I've been kind of focusing on physical sensation as a uh, happy byproduct uh, to all the, you know, augments that I'm creating. But I've decided at this point, since um, the physical sensation is such an interesting component to this project, that I am going to focus on it expressly instead of it just being a byproduct. And then I'm going to focus on the physical sensation, like the or the the sensing from my physical self separately. So I'm going to work on amassing different sensors to create sort of a like a sensor network that I can use all at the same time to uh, track what's going on with my physical state when I want to collect data. And then completely separate from that that leg of uh, R and D. I'm just going to focus on on how to replicate these physical, um, pleasurable, intimate sensations that I um, I might want to I don't know implement in the augments once I decide what they're going to be. Um, and I think I, I wrote about this. I posted that on my uh, Patreon that I was kind of thinking of breaking the project up in these two <laughs> branches. Um, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to actually just sit down and make a list of things that feel good and how I might mechanically replicate those sensations. Cause it's, it's been fun. So back to what I was saying about sitting in the kiddie pool. Um, this is kind of how the, uh, what is it? The hotspot, the thing, the butt winch, the thing that opens the uh, cheeks came into existence. Um, it started over a uh, discussion about what what about having your ass grabbed feels good or if it is something that doesn't feel good and it just kind of is meant to feel good to the person doing it but not to the recipient because there's always this sort of gropey um, it feels kind of gropey when somebody gropes you or squeezes your butt if it's unwelcomed or even sometimes when it is welcomed it just sort of feels one-sided and we sort of debated if there was any 
pleasure to derive from that experience what it was. And I kind of concluded for me, um, if a, someone squeezes my butt appropriately, the thing that actually physically feels good about having my ass squeezed is the uh, separation feeling. So then I had to think about how to achieve that with some sort of device that I wore on my body. And eventually, long story short, that led to the winch belt and the, the anchors that pull the butt cheeks apart and everything. But the whole, the whole apparatus in and of itself came from a debate that took place in the uh, kiddie pool outside about squeezing butts. <laughs> and similarly, I think we got into a debate about uh, hickeys. It's something that I've been talking to my friends about, um, the neck sucking. And some of you in the chat are, are mentioning what what feels good about the uh, being kissed on the neck, and some of it is the uh, the anticipation and the not knowing where the the lips are going to touch you next, or the warmth or the uh, the suction. There's like a lot of different things that you could argue are kind of the the crutches of that physical experience, like what makes it pleasurable. And I think for me, like if I had to really break break it down and decide what about having my neck kissed or whatever what feels good about that i would have to say i think it it does have to do with some amount of um hmm i'm like imagining it in my mind i want to say for me it is the suction like a little bit of that. I think it's the uh, the pulling of the skin, and then it's the wet sensation. So it's, I wanna say whatever an octopus would potentially do to your skin with its tentacles, <laughs> that that's analogous to the same components that feel good about having like the back of my neck kissed, and that's probably where I'm going in developing this augment that I'm starting. So that's what I'm going to focus on. Ah, I think a bite would be easier to simulate. Bites. Checking the roast. checking the rose that's funny a bite i think biting biting would probably be its own separate problem to solve for i probably will investigate a way to mechanically simulate like a love nip or something or like a bite on the skin like a biting sensation um whether or not i'll do that for the neck uh, right away, I'm not sure. I think for now, like I kind of, since I'm gonna say like November, I've had my heart set on investigating suction in some capacity and uh, molding something that does feel kind of like lips. Uh, for a, a period of time, when I was talking to my friends about doing this, the element of uh, squeezing was still in the equation. Um, whatever it was that I was to make was going to suck but also squeeze the neck as well but i think uh for now i'm going to leave the element of squeezing out of it one because uh there's a lot of room for things to go wrong there it's sort of a dangerous thing to do uh if you don't know what you're doing which i don't um i'm not entirely sure how i would achieve the squeezing if it's something that i would do through inflation or something mechanical that would actually constrict my neck uh, it's something that I'm thinking about, but for now I think it's a bit easier and maybe a bit... There's there's less room for things going wrong if I just stick to uh, the hickey... the hickey conundrum. Oh, okay, I got one. What if the de uh, Mr. Cloud Lion... I hope that's what that says. Mr. Cloudline, okay, says, okay, I got one. What if the device was half a random chance and half another person activating? I think your brain being unsure if it's a person's mind behind it or not would affect things. Um, I mean, for for the project, part of the Shibon scope is that it doesn't involve any other people. 
like really all of this stuff is supposed to be indicating the user's physical state. So it's kind of like a closed loop. It's meant to be about um, my sensation and what my body is experiencing and the devices are supposed to communicate what I'm feeling. So um, I think as far as like randomness goes, um, I probably will program some element of randomness into when the suction happens. Because I think my plan is to have each of the individual, like, cups. This is what they're going to look like, roughly. Um, these individual cups are going to uh, be, I guess, expressed individually. So I can kind of have multiple, like, if I have... Oh, here, let me switch down and show you what I'm talking about. Um, ooh, infinity. Okay, so... I know you see this. Um, I sketched this real quick. This isn't kind of what it's gonna look like as of now, but um, as of two days ago, this is what I was thinking. This, there's gonna be cups like this. Wait, hang on, hang on. Um, okay, so that is there. All right, there's gonna be cups like this. That's these guys right here. These little um, doodads. I was originally going to stick some sort of like stent mesh Kind of like what you use in uh, cleaning out like heart arteries, I guess. I guess that's what they use medically. Are these these stents? They actually um, they collapse, and then you can feed them through a tight space, and then when you uh, compress them, they widen out, and they can open up the the walls of the tube-like space that they're occupying. And I was going to use these stent meshes to create a cavity so that when they expand, um, they're, they're expanding the space and ultimately creating like a low pressure zone that would suck air in. So that was originally how I was imagining creating suction was by mechanically compressing these stints, thus inflating the cavities, but I don't think that's going to work quite as well as I thought. So I'm just using the syringes. But um, the point of me showing you this is that there's going to be multiple um, cups up and down the neck, and I'm thinking there's probably going to be a line of, of three, multiple bands of three, maybe 12 total, so like three, 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 and three. And somewhere I'm going to mount the terrifying syringes. I'm going to work them into the design so that um, you actually see these syringes being mechanically pulled and compressed via a motor and it's going to look like something you wouldn't want on your neck but um will be hopefully visually appealing regardless i want it i don't know i want it to look alien but anyhow um my mold release came today um so i, I did this these first two test cups uh, earlier this week without mold release and it was a pain in the ass getting these out. Like I think one of these cups actually lanced the crap out of the uh, walls trying to use a screwdriver to separate the uh, silicone from the, the little 3D printed mold thing that I made and that's bad. I almost hurt myself doing that so I ordered the, the spray juice that you're supposed to put in your molds while you're casting so that I don't have to do that anymore. And then these will turn out a hell of a lot nicer looking and they won't be all marred up and, and crappy like like these are. But um, that just arrived it, uh, in the mail today, so at some point I'll be pouring more molds. And I got more syringes too, so I'm excited for those. Um, where's my chat? There's my chat. <sighs> Mechanical biting can be very dangerous. Hi, Tony. Yes. Yes, I can, I can, anything that, all of this can be potentially very dangerous, though, arguably. Like, I, I was terrified of the idea of building the butt winch, because it seemed like there was a lot of room for things to go awry there, but... 
I think if done correctly, making mechanical a mechanical biter would be no less dangerous than making a mechanical nipple pincher or a nipple manipulator. Anything mechanical that involves flesh, I'm gonna say, has the potential to cause prombles. Oh, take care, Mr. Cloud Lion. Something on the ultimate turtleneck. Yes. Um, am I going for octopi style? Due to the other projects, and depending on what the augments are doing, dictates how the cups work. Um, I could. <laughs> trust my technician. James says I should trust my technician. I do. Um, and to answer your question, Michael, the a lot of this, like further on in the game, like I can start getting a bit more creative about when and how the augments react to the physical uh, feedback from my body, and there will be some sensor fusion implemented, so if there are different sensors worn throughout the body, um, something that's worn on the neck like a, uh, I don't know, like a respiratory sensor that's in one augment meant for uh, one part of the body, that data could then potentially go to the core system and then the core system could tell something that's attached to another part of my body to react based on what that sensor is getting as input. So everything will kind of like interweave and control other things potentially, but that's... I'm not there yet. I keep I keep describing it this way, like, where I'm, where I'm at with the Shibon project in general is, um... You could think of all these augments, these proof of concepts that I'm making right now, they're to a finished device as a uh, sketch is to a finished painting. So all of these, like the, the propeller pasties and the pinwheel pasties and pretty much everything I've built so far out of found objects and 3D printed parts, they're like sketches to what will eventually be a finished painting. So once I have a clearer, better sense of what all of these augments need to be or what I want them to be and how I want them to manifest, and I get better sensors that give me more reliable input, then I'll have a clearer idea of what the finished version of each thing needs to be, but I'm nowhere near that yet. So in the future, a lot of things. But as of right now, I'm still very much in the playing play phase. But yeah, going back to what I said earlier, though, about physical, um, replicating physical sensations. Um, I think for at least a period of the spring I'm going to focus just on that list. Um, like biting, pulling of the skin, um, pressing of the skin, suction, um, squeezing, all those things that feel good about um, I don't know, things that feel good when they're done to your your body. I'm going to meditate on what those things are and how I could potentially do that with a mechanism. So, there. Um, what's that? All great artists suffer for their art. Ha! I don't know, Tony, if that's a, a saying, but I know that is something that people say. Artists must suffer for their art, yes. I think that's true. I think that is definitely something that people say. I feel like, you know, the mad scientist that's in their lab, like, testing the stuff that they're working on on their own body. I feel like that person. Alright, but I'm gonna dip my face back down into uh, my CAD here. Now that I've explained where Shibon is going, like what my objective is, 
and I've explained what my intentions are with this next augment, I can I can start working on it. So hopefully, hopefully everybody's on on the same page with me. Um, augments work too well. Oh, you have a kill switch. Ooh, er, for the augments, not the user. <laughs> to prevent uh, positive feedback loops. Um, there are some good pressure sensors, I think. Um, okay. the project. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. And thank you, James. Um, I think, yes, once I, once I start wearing all this stuff at once, I'll probably build in a, uh, what's the, what's the, fuck, I can't remember. The panic button, the the stop, e stop. Wow, brain fart. I'm definitely going to make an e stop button, and I'm probably going to really adorn it. I'm going to get one of those big red chunky buttons, and I'm probably going to make a wearable out of the e stop. And I'm probably going to call it like the safe word or something. She'll say safe word on the e-stop, and I'll probably make like, I don't know, where would be a good place for that? Maybe it'll go over my belly button or something so I can just slap my belly and then it will shut the whole Shibon system down. I don't know. That sounds about right though. I, th I think I have to do that now. <laughs> the safe word e-stop. Ah, oh, okay. So without further ado, um, are you looking at the correct thing? Yes, you are. Um, so I'm gonna actually show you real quick on this. I'm gonna show you on the dummy where the suction's going to happen. Um, let's see if I just shut all this off. Perfect. Okay. So this is the, uh, the first kind of thing that I thought I was going to be doing, and there's a little neck. I'm going to doodle on top of this and show you what I'm currently working on in Fusion 360. How long has it been? Oh, I've been yammering for a half hour. Oh well, it's good to walk through what I'm thinking in my mind, so thank you for listening to me go through all of those thoughts that are just sort of clogging up my being. So, actually I'm going to switch over to Fusion too. So in... Blah, blah. There we go. So, this looks fun, doesn't it? So these are hinges, right here. And there's these three triangle pieces that bend off of that center chunk. I don't know, that center triangle? It kind of looks like the Triforce. This is a suction cup Triforce. Um, the middle of each one of these triangles is going to uh, mount one of these cups. So there's this like lip right here. Um, this indentation around the uh, cup is going to be where this circle right here fits. So you can imagine in the middle of a, uh, each one of these circles, there's going to be a suction cup, so there'll be three total. Um, these three points, um, I, I'm kind of bummed I can't show you on my dummy back there. I know he's Tiberius is super washed out at the moment because of the, the crappy, weird contrast lighting in the room, but um, I marked out three points uh, where these triangles, I think, will roughly lie on his neck. Um, in drawing, there's a... Uh, based on your collarbone, like the... Uh, if you follow the contour of the trapezius and your, your collarbone right here, and then the muscle, I forget what it's called, that goes from the back of your neck to the, uh, the front of your, these indentations right here, I forget what they're called. Wow, I'm a bad, bad art student. But um, basically, there's a triangle that's created by the muscles and this bone right here, and I'm 
kind of keeping these suction cups within that those boundary marks. So uh, the way that it's going to work out is there's going to be a cup kind of here at the front of my neck. There's going to be one kind of at the top underneath my ear on the side, and then one down here at the uh, edge of, I'm going to say, like where my shoulder would begin um, at the very uh, bottom of this slope right here. And that's where these should roughly fall. And they bend a little bit, that's what the hinges are for. I don't know if this is going to work quite as well as I think it should, but I'm going to print it and try it out anyway. Um, if it doesn't work, then whatever, that's the point of doing R&D. But, so again, ah, I could show you on the dummy what I'm talking about. There's going to be one here, one here, and one here. And this will, of course, be repeated on the other side. There we go. So there will be at least three for the moment um, on the front of the neck, on those, those muscles right here. And I think on the back of the neck, like, uh, Kind of like floating above the spine. Um, I don't think I have a drawing of the back of the body. I'm gonna have to fix that. But I'm um, poking out. Like if this is if this is the uh, front of a person like me, um, I'm going to have these syringes poking out this way. And they're going to be staggered. So if you're looking at the uh, back of the person, um, actually, I think I take that back. Um, I think those are going to be angled. Yeah, they might be angled up. Okay, so if this is the the back of this human. Um, how can I change this real quick to make it look like the back of a person? Hmm, okay. No collarbone. And no chin. There. Does this look like a back now? No matter. You get the idea. Um. that a little darker. Okay, so if this is the back of a person, really? Oh, 50. Interesting. Those super exaggerated body parts. Um, I'm thinking those syringes are going to so the plunger bit is going to it's going to basically double in size once that plunger is pulled out of the syringe so I have to make sure that those poke out away from the body and don't overlap with one another either. So I think these are going to be staggered. Like so. That just looks like a mess right now. But um there's going to be like a crisscross mesh of syringes. Yeah. And if this is the uh, 
this would be the uh, tip of each and you would have the hoses coming off of each and going to their appropriate suction cup. And then if these were angled a little higher, they'd probably come up as such too. Um, so that kind of like sticking out from the sides of the neck, you have these tubes in nice sweeping arcs to create kind of like a visual, I don't know, contour, I guess. So that's going to be worked into the design. Um, the way that I'm going to actuate the syringes themselves are probably with some sort of rack and pinion. That is to say that there's going to be a motor that has a gear on it somewhere. And it's going to be attached to either the plunger of the syringe or the syringe itself, and it's going to be actuating one or the other. Probably the plunger, that probably makes more sense. Um, but as the motor spins, and I'm probably gonna, I'm gonna try and use as small motors as I can, of course, some tiny little Metal Gear so servo we do. Um, the smallest I can get away with, I'm going to stack those. And I'm gonna probably attempt to do a version of this cowl, I don't know what you'd call it, this like choker. I don't really want to call it a choker because it's not choking. So it's either it's either going to be a shawl, shawl or a cowl, but um, the first version of this cowl is going to probably have six suction cups to start, and then if everything works the way I want it to, then I'll probably try to get tweak the design so that I can fit um, twelve. I don't know if there's a way, and maybe Tony, my, my technician, if he's still with us, maybe he would know, or any of you would know, if I can attach more than one shunt or tube to one syringe. Like if there's a way that I can split that so that multiple tubes are connected to one syringe so that I don't have to have like a fucking million syringes just lined up in a rack on the back of my neck. Um, if I could get away with, I don't know, controlling the pressure of like three or four with one syringe, and they're just like all in a, in a thing, uh, I would like to try and do that. The tricky thing with that though is if um, every syringe, or if every uh, suction cup that's connected to that um, tube, that vein, isn't making contact with the skin when the syringe is act, like, act, actuated, um, none of them are necessarily going to suck. So that's kind of a dangerous thing to do, I realize. So I don't know if I'm going to do that or not. And I should probably check the chat since I asked you guys a bunch of questions. Um, um, the don't stop button. I do need a, yeah, the dome. The Triforce of Pleasure. Yes, that is kind of what this design is. Uh, why place them so far up the neck? It might be uncomfortable. Um, I think for me, like, there, there was a little bit of thought in this. Like, if I wanted, if I want, like, the parts of my neck that feel the most pleasurable when sucked on are probably anything along my trapezius, like on the, the crook of my neck, and then above the collarbone, and then maybe higher up right here. So if I... there is kind of like a triangle area of good sensation, and a good... I want to say a significant percentage of the good sensation does come from the back of the neck, which is where I propose sticking all these clunky syringes. So I'm kind of... I'm not making good use of the prime real estate back here for sensation, so there is a chance that I might stick this rack of 
crisscross syringes in the front. Poss possibly. Um, I have to be careful though because if I want to wear these um, augments at the same time, I can't really stick them any lower without interfering with the, the boob augment and I can't stick them very much lower on my back because they're going to start overlapping with the uh, pulse pack, which is like the main brain of the whole thing. I could potentially have them sticking up like off of my trapezius from the back, like on either side, um, like some terrifying um, Spalder's shoulder pieces, like from WoW, if you want to think of those uh, shoulder pieces from any MMO you've ever played that have the spikes coming off of them. I could do something horrific like that. It would totally change the uh, aesthetic of the uh, Shibon suit of Amor, if you will, as a whole, but that might not be a bad thing. It's something I could play with, for sure. Um... Y valve, but the pressure will decrease by half. Hmm. The back rack. You can split them out. It all depends on the volume of the suction cup and the volume of the syringe. Uh, which is something I'm going to have to math out, I'm sure. Why place the syringes so high up on the neck? Um, I think they'd probably be on the, the upper back. They probably won't be on the actual neck. Um, they probably will be like right at the, the top of the back meat is where I'm thinking they'll branch off from. Um, so there might be room above them to place additional suction cups. And they are not to scale with this drawing at all now that I'm looking at it. Those are like huge. But um, I don't know, we'll see. These came in too. I ordered a pack of 10 syringes like this that have, I think, the appropriate size tip. Uh, Mark had one of these on hand from back when he used to medicate his cat, so this is just like a vet veterinary syringe that he had lying around that happened to work. Um, I'm amazed that this worked at all, honestly. I'm kind of wary about making anything that involves suction because it seems like it's an easy thing to mess up. Um, getting something airtight seems like it's a fussy thing to do. So I'm surprised that I had success this early on in the game, because this is not... It's not... What well, wasn't engineered well, <laughs> it works. <coughs> Excuse me. Big collars for the queen's head, maybe. Yes, yes, kind of like those big queen collars that they used to wear those doilies around their neck. I think that's kind of where my, my heart is, since you bring it up. Like, I think my, my brain is channeling that in some capacity. Like, one of those Victorian, like, William Shakespeare esque neck frill. Yeah, I like the spitting dino. I I dig that idea too. That reference definitely makes me happy. Dino frill. Anything that's a a lizard frill brings a smile to my lips. But anyhow, I'm gonna actually print these. Um, I should have probably started this when I started the stream, but eh, whatever. So I think this this. Let me replicate this guy. Um. Okay. I always forget to check it. Okay, so here we go. So I think these 
circular pieces, the actual, I'm going to call them collars, for the uh, suction cup dues. I'm going to probably print those in black, and the rest of it will be the standard <clears throat> silver that I've been using for the rest of the augments. Um, but yeah, I think I'm going to print these. I think they're ready. Um... Here, while I do all that boring stuff, I'm gonna switch the thing back to my. Oh, here we go. To me. Wow. Yeah, I have my hair up in shitty pigtails today. I need a haircut, like, badly, but I'm not gonna get one anytime soon, so I'm just gonna have to deal with it, but I'm one of those people that I, I actually, in fact, prefer keeping my hair short, like, really fucking short. If you see any pictures of me from, like, over a year ago, I have very short hair, and I kind of, more or less, grew it out long like this to wear in a bob specifically for this project, because all of this is kind of like, I am the embodiment of how this project feels, like what it means to me, so I kind of took on a, a, a character of myself just to kind of get in the mindset to do all of this, which wasn't as meditated as it sounds, it kind of happened naturally. I think everybody does this, they probably don't like pick it apart as much as I do, but um, around the time that I started doing all of this was when I decided, okay, I think I'm gonna actually cut my hair, get bangs, um, and sort of rock the bob for a while. But um, I foresee in my future actually going back to keeping my hair shorter, because I hate this. <laughs> this is driving me nuts. I feel... I feel the static cling to my chin and the sides of my neck. Support G code. I'm such a good girl, I even have the uh, SD card here already. It's like I knew I was going to be printing today or something. I'm going to print this in that, um, wait, print settings. I'm going to use I think it's called PET. Yeah. So Mark has his black PET in there right now, and I'm going to use it. And I don't like this stuff because the last the last stream I did, if any of you were present for it, um, you might remember that I ripped <laughs> the um, whatever C casing material thing casing oh my god it's like a sausage the the skin the film that's on the prusa print bed i like ripped it off because the pet just sort of bonded to it like like inseparable bond so um i know what i'm supposed to do now so that that doesn't happen but in any case, this says it's going to take 25 minutes. I'm going to go stick this in. I'll be right back. Um, man, I don't have anything for... I have nothing set up to keep you company while I'm gone. Ugh, I'll be back.
Yay! It's a doing. Alright, back to uh, whatever. Let's see, I'm gonna check the chat. Um, there I am. Okay, I'm checking the chat and then I'll go back to whatever I was doing. Um, up. Everything for the aesthetic. I hope everything goes well with the printing and you have a good day out. Oh. Cool. Sleep well, Michael. Rest. Thanks for keeping me company. Don't have that hair problem, but when I did, I nearly I started on fire welding. If you set your hair on fire welding, yes. And you need you need to you need to fix that. But yeah. No, one of the things I always wanted to do was, um, I wanted to have, like, shave my head at some point in my life just to let my hair go through every stage of growing out and just periodically do that until my hair became bothersome and then I'd just shave it again. But, um, I have this horrible unsightly scar across the top of my head now, so I can never shave my head unless I want to welcome everyone that I cross paths with, with asking me why it's there, which I don't want to deal with, so I'm just gonna keep this, like, in some short capacity for the rest of forever. But I am envious of your, your not hair having, Tony. Because if it were up to me, I just wouldn't put up with it. Yeah, it's a, it's a bothersome thing. I'm very much, like, a pragmatic person when it comes to, like, my nails and hands. Like, my, my mother's the total opposite. Like, she gets her hair done and her nails done, and her body is very much, like, a thing that facilitates in her physical appearance. It's, like, a performative thing, but I'm, like, the polar opposite of her, and I always have been since I was a kid. Like, my, my body, <clears throat> I use it as a tool. Like, my hands are tools, and my eyes are tools, and I don't want things blocking them, so I've kind of always lived my life where I just need to get my hair out of the way and I just need to make sure that my nails are cut short and, you know, my clothes, I'm okay with getting paint on them or, or breaking, breaking them, breaking my clothes, getting holes in them, um, fucking them up. So it's, me and her have always had a very different philosophy on, uh, why and how we present ourselves as we do. <laughs> but the hair has always been kept short for that reason. It took me a really long time to get to that point though. There was a lot of pressure on me when I was younger to like, I don't know, cut style and dye my hair, which I <clears throat> did for a pretty long amount of time. Um, a huge percentage of my life, I did the hair thing. <clears throat> my throat just decided to close up. But, um, I don't know, I want to say when I truly did go away to college and start building things and it became more, more of a struggle to just maintain the hair out of the face, I just took the plunge and, and got it cropped really short. And my folks hated that. They still kind of hate it, but whatever. That's what parents do, right? They hate- they hate your decisions. <laughs> Nothing really seemed to fit the look I'm going for. The look. So that triggers the suction action you might have said, but I missed it. Oh, so what triggers the suction action? Um, I'm thinking for this module I'm going to go with respiratory rate. So, um, another thing I haven't really mentioned um, as it relates to this project, I don't think I've ever really talked about this, like, on the record, but, um, I think I'm channeling this experience that I had earlier in my life. I was, um, <clears throat> I was in the, the hospital for two weeks in, um, ICU. And I was hooked up to this machine that was monitoring my body, like all these different 
aspects of my physical state. And there is this monitor, like this huge, like flat screen monitor on this arm gantry. And it was hanging down in front of me, swiveled around so that it was basically facing me. And at all times when I was conscious in this room, I had this list and they were all a different color and it was some stat of my my being that was being tracked constantly and there was like a fuck ton of them and for every stat that was on the screen there was some wire connected to my my body like there's the EKG wires on my chest and there was the blood pressure sleeve and there was like things in my arms and in my head like i had an actual tube in my head i had all this crazy stuff hooked up to me and um i was i had nothing to do but stare at this thing and meditate on my mortality for two weeks and i don't think that experience ever really like left me it's always kind of at arm's reach and i think that on some level i'm channeling that in working on this project um, I'm creating a system that hooks up to my body all over, that I can monitor, that gives me some deeper understanding of myself as a animal, basically. And I think I'm going down my list of different things that I, I remember tracking when I was in the hospital, and one of the more interesting things was the, uh, the respiratory monitor because um i think the the visual that i got was this line that was on this little graph and it would either go up i think when i breathed in and then it would go down when i breathed out over time and it was kind of like um i started controlling it sort of like the whole like flappy birds thing where i would um I would like breathe in to make it go up and then i'd breathe out to go down and i was trying to make like perfect like sine wave shapes with my breath and I would just sort of stare at it and then I would try to like make drawings so it was all this weird shit that I started to do with my own awareness of my my physical state because there's nothing else to do and I think I'm going to look into getting one of those respiratory monitors like the the medical ones that senses when you're breathing like not your your heart rate or your blood pressure but specifically your your respiratory rate and i think that um based on how heavy i'm breathing or how fast i'm taking in air breathing taking breaths per minute um it's going to affect the um maybe it will affect either the pattern or the intensity of the suction, maybe. And that's another thing I'm going to have to figure out, because I'm, I'm only now thinking about it for the first time. Huh. Yes, I did hold my breath. If I um didn't... Like, I would get down to, like, something crazy, like, three breaths per minute or something when I was in the hospital. And, um, I think if, if my, uh, respiratory rate, uh, went below a certain number of breaths per minute, um, this alarm would go off in the room, and then somebody would come and, like, wake me up or shake me or something and make sure I was okay. Um, and this thing used to go off a lot, and my parents and I were trying to figure out what the hell the alarm meant, and we finally realized after a couple of days that the alarm triggered due to this one stat on the screen, and we ascertained that that stat, based on the little line that I could control with my breathing, was a respiratory sensor. But we had to kind of reverse engineer it to even figure that out, so no one really told us any of this, it was just stuff that I had to map over time. Um, and I think that my, my rate of breath got so low because I was on some like serious opioids and I think those are responsible for slowing your um your rate of breath I think that's a side effect of them and they wanted to make sure that I didn't stop breathing 
because that's, of course, very bad. But, um, I don't know, I'm not quite sure where I would acquire a sensor like that, because theirs worked really well. Whatever it was, whichever wire it was that was hooked up to whatever part of my body, um, that it was, it was tapping for that information, it did a very splendid job. Um, which force is required to push and pull the syringes? I have not tested how much force it will take to push and pull the syringes. Um, uh, you were asking, or is it just say damn ninjas? Yeah. So you're pulsating the motors, running the suction might add sensation. So that triggers the suck sucking action you may have said. But okay, I'm caught up on the chat. But yeah, um, I haven't measured how much force it takes to pull the syringe. Um, it does get kind of tricky to do so once, um, if it's if it's actually making contact with a surface, I can get about halfway, um, like I, I can get to about <clears throat> here before it um, gets really difficult to pull because um, it takes more torque to pull the syringe out the uh, the farther back it goes. I realize this, so I am going to need somewhat torquey motors, and I realize that wherever these are mounted, um, they're going to be they're going to need to be mounted fairly solidly. What am I getting now? in order to do their job. So I think, as with all things, you start with one and then work your way up. I'm probably going to finish printing this little Triforce of suction that I'm making right now. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably rig up three. I said one, but I'm gonna rig up three, like one side. And I'm going to attach them somehow to a bank of syringes and I'm going to try and actuate all three at the same time with a motor. And if I can do that, then I will probably try to figure out how I can design some sort of brace or bracket that will allow me to mount three separate motors, one for each syringe, and control each one of them discreetly. And if I can work out that entire system, um, controlling just the three cups, um, one at a time with motors and syringes that actually fulfill their purpose like consistently with some level of success then i will break out and start doing the exotic stuff like uh, negotiating the um the aesthetic of the neck uh cowl and the um where the the cups are going to go because they might not stay in a triforce i might do lines i don't know this is going to get very Hellraiser very quick, I'm thinking. But what about a small pump? Um, I could... I could do, like, a, a vacuum pump, but, um, I don't know how small they get, and I don't know how I'd integrate that on my body, and I don't know how I would put in a check in a, with a vacuum pump that would make sure that it stopped sucking at some point and didn't continue to pull air and cause skin issues. I don't know. It seems like a scary thing to try and control, so I haven't looked into it yet. Linear screw motors. Thanks, James. I will look that up now. Are they expensive? Do you happen to know? That's another thing. Um, I'm talking about medical grade like respiratory sensors and stuff and linear actuators, all of which are probably very expensive. I don't have a very large budget for this project right now. So um, another reason why I'm not using a vacuum pump or anything like that is because I don't have the money to throw at it right now. So I'm still gonna keep develop I'm still going to keep developing augments for the project, but I'm not going to be able to get very Screw motor, not crew motor. 
I'm not going to be able to get super exotic at this time. What? Let's... DC... What? Linear screw. What? These all look rather- oh, those are tiny. Okay. Stepper-driven linear screw motor. Okay. That's not terribly expensive. I'm looking at here, and I'll post the link. I'm looking at this right now. Oh, never mind. Seriously. The link is too long, so I cannot share this with you. Apparently. I can share it in Discord, maybe. There's no, like, short link. Share. Here. Does this do it? No, it just doesn't want me to share this link. Alright, take my word for it. Um, I'm looking at like a $20 version. DC 9 to 12. Mm -hmm. They look fancy. Like, I, I dig it. Stepper motor. Screw nut slayer. I mean, this would definitely be a lot better looking than me trying to use any other type of motor that I have on hand here in the lab, so I might get one. This looks fairly small. I wonder if it's strong enough to do what I want it to. Hmm. Here's the model number. What kind of cups am I using? Let's do Chinese cupping cups on eBay cheap. Nam, uh, Tablatronics. I'm, I'm using... I'm molding my own suction cups um, with the. Uh, what is this stuff called? Ecoflex. I'm using Ecoflex 10, which is, I think, the softest shore hardness you can get in that type of silicone. It's very. Um, it's kind of like the inside of a fleshlight. <laughs> if you've ever touched the inside of a fleshlight, it's that soft, like, very skin like. Um, texture of silicone, which I like, because um, the way that I'm the way that I'm doing this is um, when I mold them, they actually look like this. It's like a longer, thinner, floppier sleeve, and there's sort of like a, a a shelf that I mold on the inside of this, so that when I I turn it inside out entirely. It halves, and then there's this lip right here that will help me mount this into something. But what this does is when I when I fold it like a cuff, um, I get this nice smooth like lip that's pretty much exactly like an octopus suction cup. And then there's a hollow inside like this. I, I don't even know if you can see this. Um, let me check my OBS. There we go. Okay, so you, you can see that there but it's um it's got a really nice um mouth feel i guess it's got a nice uh suction 
feeling. But that's kind of the game plan as of now. Like, I don't know if it'll change or deviate very far from this in the future. But um, for now, like, I think this is working. Uh, the only difference between this and the one that's attached to the syringe is I added this little um, nipple to the um, mold on one end so that uh, I can actually insert the silicone tube and there's a little bit of a, like a starter lip that goes up some ways from the uh, suction cup so that I can wrap, there's like a rubber band around there just to kind of make sure that the it's airtight ish. Um, and these molded really, they didn't mold terribly, but they uh, they frayed and ripped and tore quite a bit while I was trying to separate them from the mold, because again, I didn't use any releasing agent, so everything that I cast from here on out will likely look a lot prettier. And I won't have to hurt myself trying to demold this stuff. Um, Mouth feel, yes. Um, yeah, it is like calamari, exactly. So I think there's a possibility that LEDs will get implemented in this thing eventually. Um, but it's kind of like a, that's like a, a frill aspect at this point. I think the only reason why LEDs got put in the the boob thing is because, or like the, the most recent thing I built that behind me, is because that's kind of like a third iteration in to that augment and I don't know. I think the, the farther in with each one of these augments I get, the more liberty I'll be able to take in uh, making them interesting to look at and adding LEDs and making them kind of showy. Um, I mean, it's such an early stage with the the suction cup neck thing that I'm not even really worried about the uh, how it's gonna look yet, but eventually I will. I'm just not quite there. Now I can't stop touching this. It feels so satisfying. So it holds. Hello, yo, Miss Mista. I probably I totally butchered that, but hi, <laughs> hi everybody. Um, but anyhow, so I'm gonna dip my face back down to this uh, drawing that I'm working on. Where is it? There it is. Okay. I'm gonna draw for a little bit. Because I don't... I don't know, I could work on the syringe holder. I could work on this back part that I just drew that um, is supposed to actually uh, mount the syringes to, but I find that's probably not a smart thing to uh, start on yet since I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to be driving them. Actually, I need to... Hang on. James. You're James Driscoll. Thank you for mentioning the linear screw motors. That's what I... I'm gonna research that a bit more, because that looks looks like the form factor that I want for this. They're not all weird and chunky clunky like servos are, and <clears throat> I don't know if I want to go with any other motor form factor that I have lying around here in the lab. Because we have stuff like in other projects that I could go and harvest and use, or attempt to use right now just to get an idea, but um, I don't know, it's always fun to get a new type of thing and try it out and see how it works. So I'm gonna do that. Um, what is the name of the calamari thing? Ali is asked. Um, I don't know. These are just the suction cups, I guess. 
These are the lips. It's gonna be fun though, because in a in another um day or so. Actually, no, tonight. I can actually show you this. Um here. Nope. There we go. So I have this guy. There's actually two more parts to this. So it's like a four part mold um, on my bench, like my casting bench behind me. If I stand up, you can kind of see. No, you can't because man, is that light balance shitty. Oh man. No, you can't because it's washed out. This camera's annoying. So. At some point later on tonight, uh, Mark said he's gonna come home with the the mail, which means that the release release agent will will be in my hot little hands probably around 4:30 today. Um, I have this little crucible looking thing. There's a bottom to it that um, has some some of the the shapes necessary <laughs> to cast my tentacle or not my tentacle my um suction cup and then there's a, a part that drops down in the center here that will make sure that the the middle of my suction cup is hollow and there's a little shelf lip on the inside of that that um that piece will sit nicely on top of and then the bottom similarly fits in this this cavity as well and then I tape the edges of this with paper tape which is the stuff that I, I endorse like hell Every time I do a stream, the stuff is so great. It's the, the probably one of the most useful random things that I have lying around the shop, and it makes a great bandage. But yeah, I'll probably wrap it in paper tape to make sure that it's it's nice and tight, and I won't get any flashing or leaking. And yeah, I'll know probably before I go to bed whether or not I get the perfect suction cup. And the other thing that's fun about this is I can actually get different colored dyes to put in the silicone in the future so that these aren't necessarily just clear like this. Although these would probably make a nice light diffuser. Yeah, maybe. I mean, if I could get RGB LEDs inside of one of these, then I could just have glowing suction cups on my neck, which is, why not, right? So maybe one of the uh, action plans in the future will be to make little calamari RGB LED boards and shove them inside of here around the thing. No, because then I'd have to get I have to get wires to them somehow. Hmm. So I can't be inside of the cup. This would this would very much compromise my my suction um do. Sorry, I'm thinking about this. How could I get RGB LEDs inside of the vacuum suction cup without compromising the air tightness of the suction cup. That's that's something to talk about over a beer this afternoon when Mark gets home for sure. Cause yeah, it would be really cool since these are nice. It's like like a semi-transparent material. It would be really cool to turn each one of these since they are going to be stacked on the neck into a light diffuser that has has the capacity to glow like a mystical light marshmallow. Yeah? Uh. Oh, the Discord? Here, I can post the link. I've been kind of quiet in there lately and I super apologize for that. So I applied for a bunch of stuff this spring, which is what I was kind of busy doing other than 
the, the stuff that I've published lately. Um, <clears throat> I applied for residencies and the like, which is what I do in the spring. And it's April, so this is about the time that I find out whether or not any of my, um, my whatever, um, anything took root. And I'm so far having kind of a poor success rate. Like, uh, as of right now, it doesn't look like I'm going any place exotic for the moment, which is fine. I'm just It's actually probably good that I have time to sit this summer and finish off a lot of these things that I've started. These blueprints look like you're one step away from becoming a Batman villain. Yeah? Thank you. I think that's a compliment. At least for me it is. What about adding some choking element, something similar to how a commercial blood pressure measure tool works with an additional tube as scarf? Uh, I think eventually I'll, I'll work on the asphyxiation thing with the air pressure, the inflation, the uh, squeezing element of sensation, but not yet. Like I think for this this iteration, I'm just going to focus on the element of um, suction, like creating the uh, the hickey feeling. So it's kind of like an isolated problem I'm solving for at the moment. Um, but I will in the future, when I'm brave enough to, after sufficient research. I like this. The potential for mechanical malfunction seems unwise. Creating something like that in something with any potential. Yes. No, I agree. I, I do not want to hurt myself or kill myself working on any of this stuff. They don't usually possess that much pressure, and one only needs to limit the blood flow, not the whole breathing mechanism, so just an inflating bubble on the, the vein could be sufficient, maybe. Um, will you ever make a male version of the sheep on? Um, I mean, bear for you to answer your question. Like, the project is primarily about um, me exploring myself as an individual, so it's it's... It's not- the point of the project isn't for me to do it for anyone else, it's just- it's- it's technology that I'm making to express who I am as a sexual being, as a- as an individual. So part of the project is encouraging other people to do the same. Um, that's sort of the spirit of the- the type of uh, development that I'm doing. It's a- uh, it's- self-exploration so i encourage you to do it like if you were interested in making your own hebon or your own um technology that helped you learn things about your body that you you didn't previously know or weren't as aware of and you wanted to express that in some capacity then yes like that's that's what i would encourage that's in the the whole mission scope of shibon but would i do it no that's not not what I'm in it for, to answer your question. Fiber optics. Oh, I wonder if I could use fiber optics. I could mount to the back of the cup and then diffuse through it. I could. I could. I'll hold it up there and after I'm catching up a chat, I'll hold an LED to the back of the cup and see if it looks as nice Get inside the silicone. Could cast them inside the silicone have them in during casing. I could cast them in the silicone, but the wires would still have to come out of it in some at some point, which wouldn't be bad if it was not connected to the air air vein circuit circuit of air. Um, so I could do that. I could make like a little cavity. Um, like a thicker cavity in the back of this, and then like a pocket, and then insert the uh, RGB LEDs inside of the pocket, and then they could just sort of live in there. Um, that's an option here. So if I just hold this to the back of the cup, I mean that, that lights up pretty well. It's exciting. It's like a glowing donut. Um, sorry, I'm still catching up on chat. Okay, 
uh, have women drink is anyone going to want to impose a health risk? Restricting any amount of blood flow could potentially cause dizziness or lightheadedness, which could be a problem. Uh, yeah, I don't want to cut off blood flow to my head. Like, I'm not into that, that sort of feeling, sensation. Like, it's something that I wouldn't necessarily find pleasurable. I think the thing that, that I do like about having, like, my neck squeezed is the actual, like, pressure, not the cutting off of air or blood flow. I think it's the idea that something is holding me in place rather than what that holding is achieving or accomplishing, <laughs> if that makes any sense. But that's just me. Like. If I were to if I were to do anything that squeezed my neck, I would have to really think about w what it is to me that is pleasurable about that sensation, and it probably wouldn't manifest in the form of cutting off blood flow, because I don't like that. I don't like when I get that lightheaded, like dots in front of my vision, um, thing that happens when you do have blood flow cut off to your head. Like I hate that feeling. Um, <clears throat> I don't find it pleasurable. I think silicone is most use fiber optic line for the light to attach to the surface of the cup. I could, like, fiber optic line. Um, in what, what type of fiber optic? Like, when I think of fiber optic, I only, I, I think of the, uh, the really, really thin, like, uh, hair-like fibers. Um, and as far as I know, that's the only uh, like form that they come in, unless there's something else that I'm not aware of, in which case I would like to know. If you know of something, tell me. <laughs> tell me. Make them fluorescent with the dye in the silicone. I could make them fluorescent. Um, making sufficient research. Sufficient enough research, I'll say that. Are you making a doohickey to doohickeys? Yes, I am making a, a doohickey doohickey. That's funny. But, um, inside. Um, I wonder if those suction cups will still elicit the same reaction without the warmth of human lips. Um, Six cubit. If they are against the skin, they will warm up pretty quick. Silicone holds heat reasonably well. Um, I think. Um, the from what I like when I played around with this thing the other day, like I literally put this on my arm, and if I. You can see it compress. So if I just actuate the syringe with my uh, hand, you can see it kind of bob up and down there. If I uh, go back and forth between a certain point, there's like a- you can feel the air kind of poof out as the uh, air exits the syringe and it like um, depressurizes and then when you pull it out it pressurizes and it like that that pumping action of going back and forth mixed with the softness of the silicone actually does kind of feel like um, lips sucking um, the warmth isn't there um, which does alter the experience it doesn't necessarily feel exactly like lips but it does it does feel like someone like something sucking on you. And it's because of that pumping, pumping um, back and forth sensation. So whatever I ended up using to drive the plunger out of these syringes would need to be able to move fairly quickly to achieve that sort of like sucking, I guess, that pulsating. And it would be nice if it kind of was able to do so at a nice in and out sort of rate. That's another thing I always have issues with is controlling motors well enough to get a gradation of emotion, like something nice and slow easing in and out. 
Like anytime I, I control motors, it's always like full speed in any direction or like one consistent speed. I've never really been able to get a motor to slowly ramp in and ramp out of motion gradually. And that's probably because I lack the programming code writing knowledge to do so, but it's something that I would like to achieve with this once I figure out how I'm actuating this thing. Because part of the secret sauce or the sweet sauce or the, the successy sauce <laughs> of getting this to work or feel the way it ought to is um, actually programming the motors to actuate this thing in such a way that when the air evacuates and goes in and out of the tube, it, it feels pleasurable. So it can't feel like you're, you're medically being sucked on by some sort of like alien anchoring cup device. Like I think the point is actually to, to find the kind of make this this action feel human i guess for me at least i don't know that's another thing to meditate on like would it still feel good if it felt like a robot doing it versus kind of like the the random quality of having a human suck on your neck and i think this this equation or not this equation but this problem probably enters the equation when uh, people are making like sex sex dolls or sex robots or those robots you see that give blowjobs to guys. Um, something that me and Mark frequently talk about is whether or not that would feel like as good given that it's something that's programmed and would inherently have some sort of mechanical quality to it that doesn't feel human. And I wonder about that. But anyhow, um, I'm gonna dip back down and look at the chat real quick. Uh, PMMA fiber comes in jacketed and unjacketed tons of sizes. Thank you. Tablatronic. Tablatronics. I'm sorry, my vision is so... I'm like... <sighs> red laser through thin fiber optics could be an option, but I don't think... Uh, the fiber optics would be bright enough for anything more than spots of light. Mm. Uh, a pulsed peristaltic pump in a hurt backpack might work. A, uh, how about a stepper motor driven peristaltic pump? You can get the basic ones on eBay for about five dollars. I could try it. I have one. I have one on hand actually that a friend gave me. I haven't used it yet. It's like in Noodle's bin with all of Noodle's things. Sucked on by an alien mechanical cup device. <laughs> Sucked on by an alien mechanical cup device. That's how I want to wake up every morning. Saliva. I'm not sure yet. I don't- I'm really really leery about introducing anything wet into this project yet, given um, that I'd have to control it because everything is in relative, like, close proxy to electronics. And if I'm wearing this device with other devices below it that have um, exposed circuitry, I don't want to, I don't want to risk shorting anything out. So eventually, maybe. Now I'm imagining a camshaft driving each plunger in and out like a six-cylinder motor. Yes. Since you mentioned that, I drew something that is kind of like that spark fun cells on the railway pipe. People and machines have their own pros and cons, hard to say which is better when they're significantly different, only it's discontinued. Yes, James, like I know they discontinued their light pipe. I used to buy it and then I went back and I went to buy more for this project for Shibon and I saw that it was gone, so I've been trying to source it from some other place, and I can't find it anywhere. So if you happen to find it, like, on the internet someplace, again, let me know, because it's something that I've been wanting to use, and I just... it's gone. Of course. But to, uh, to answer right where I think I'm gonna head next with the, uh, with the lights, I think I am just going to light them through the material from the outside, because it's, as of right now, the path of least resistance. 
and I will probably create a ring for the back of this um, for each suction cup that has like eight RGB LEDs or something per ring and I think that if if I design this in such a way that I can kind of fold the lip the turtleneck lip up and over the, the board around the edges it can even probably hold it in place and it can be like partially embedded in the back of each one of these and then um I can have wires following the same path as the uh the tube and then it will look really terrifying yeah so I think that will be a thing um, I'm gonna go check that print because it's definitely been 25 minutes thank you for the good conversation guys like this is this is good brainstorming I definitely definitely have had brain brain things happen this morning, and now I'm on a different path than I thought I was on earlier, which is good. But yeah, to show you the thing that I was, like, I, I talked about that stint material, like, last, last weekend, there was a brief period of time where I thought I was going to use this, um, here, let me get it. I thought I was going to be using this, like, um, it's like a, it's like a mesh, and when you compress it on the edges, it gets, like, really wide. Um, I was going to use some of this on the inside of the suction cups so that, um, When I, uh, I was going to mechanically compress the uh, cup from like the back, and if this was in the inside, the idea was that it would it would widen and create like a like a vacuum polyp, and it would it would want to pull air in. So if I had just a tiny hole, um, like a a skin with a hole behind the suction cup, um, it would want to kind of stick onto skin when this, I guess, compressed and therefore inflated, but um, I wasn't quite sure how I would apply even pressure to all of the cups from the back to even do that, uh, so I kind of shelved the idea for now. So I have all these little pieces cut out for like the, the hypothetical moment when I do try it again, but for now I dialed it back, and the syringes just seem like, again, low-hanging fruit, path of least resistance, so um, eventually I might revisit this, but for the time being, I don't know. The idea got complicated fast, but it would look really cool, because um, you'd have those semi-transparent cups with this nice, like, textured mesh on the inside, and if those were lit up, it would have a really interesting effect, I think, so if I could pull that off in the future, I would like to. Um, it's not gonna happen yet. One cam driving six syringes would look pretty awesome. That's the, I think right now what I'm going for. Like I'm gonna try and drive three syringes with one cam and then three with another and they're gonna undulate back and forth. <laughs> kind of like a motor. Part of my important insects for me personally and robot will not have. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. S77N. Yeah, robots. I kind of feel the same way. I, I, I think part of this project is me re-embracing the fact that I'm in fact an animal. And like part of the part of me that enjoys sex is the animal part of me. And that animal wants to engage in sexual things with another animal and, and not necessarily a machine, which is funny because this whole project is about making a machine. So I just completely negated what I tried to explain. <laughs> wow. Um, I think in in acknowledging the parts of 
sexual contact that feel pleasurable to me, I'm meditating on them and kind of deconstructing them and creating these devices really as a personal commentary on who I am as a sexual being, I think, if that makes any sense. Because yeah, ultimately, like, I, none of this really does anything for me sexually. It's not like I could just put on a potential Shibon complete suit of armor that is equipped to work optimally and get off by wearing it. I don't think that's the point. I think it's more self-exploration and testimony, really. Like, it's all self-exploration and testimony. It's not meant to be a replacement for intimate contact. Does that make sense? <sighs> um... Two pairs of three will look pretty awesome too. I don't think it negates it. You have a transhumanism type thing going on in all of this to me at least. Hmm. It's an interesting thing. But yeah, I said I was gonna go check on the printer, so I'll be right back in like two seconds. And I'm gonna refill my coffee. Not that I need it, but when do we ever need more coffee? Okay. All right, so here's my collar for the cup. This guy right here. Um, I don't remember exactly how this was going to do, but it doesn't matter. I'll figure it out once the rest of it's printed. Uh, nope, that's the wrong way. Bad. Um, wait, let me look at my CAD. Okay. No. No. No eagle. Okay. Uh... 
Okay, yeah, 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 okay. So that's... It's going to go this way. Okay. So I think this is the first part I've ever printed in PET. Mark just got a reel of it for something he's working on, but I've never actually used it before. Um, there we go. So that's gonna... Here, let me switch back again. That's this... Uh, mm, ah. That's this piece right here that I printed in black. <clears throat> And it is going to, nope, there. It's gonna wrap around the cups like this. So it's kind of like a collar or a brace. And the way that the um, suction cup is molded is so that there's this little, I don't know, it's, it's like a little trench so that I can actually do this to it and it doesn't look weird. And if I pull this off, that is that lip that is designed into the mold. And that's what makes it such a pain in the ass to demold, but it's absolutely necessary if I want these things to, to mount gracefully and not just be squeezed in place with some sort of, like, I don't know, creepy silicone sausage bondage thing. Creepy silicone sausage bondage. That's the name of my metal band. Creepy silicone sausage bondage. So or just sausage bondage. I like that. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right. Time to prepare the next print. Okay. So the profile on these might need to be slimmer. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if the, there's going to be any interference with these pieces once they're printed and they actually have to fold up and go on my neck. Um, I kind of imagined this system working kind of like geometric facets, sort of like a, a folding up kind of like a soccer ball does, um, but something that's meant to fit the crook of the neck right here. And the Triforce shape make, made sense because it is a, a triangle, but I don't know if the footprint of each of these, once they're spaced out and like folded appropriately on their hinges, if those uh, tubes coming off of them are actually going to like want to cross over one another or if there's going to be any space spatial issues like i'm thinking if there's one up like one here here and here like in a triangle um it might not be an issue um again i measured the uh the center point of each of these and sort of uh i took stickers and i i dotted them in place on my dummy right there um so I have a rough idea of the space that these things are going to occupy, but I'm not actually 100% certain until I actually make the thing and, and test it out in action. And I think as a stand-in, for since I don't have enough of these molded yet, and for the time being, I think I might just use actual, like, marshmallows is a stand-in. I'm just gonna squeeze them and put them in these braces and then put them on my neck. So, yeah. Things are gonna get weird in the kitchen later on tonight. Yeah? That'll definitely post pictures of on Twitter. People will be like, what are you doing to your marshmallows, Sarah? And I'll be like, I hate them. I hate those marshmallows. Damn them. Alright. I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing right now. I am saving off those two other shapes, the uh, center shape with the uh, hinges. Um, what can I, what should I call this? Triforce one. That's what we're gonna name that. And then I'm going to save off the other piece, the one that that, um, that black part that I just printed mounts to, the other triangle, I'll call this Triforce two. 
and these will be printed in that lovely silver PLA, not PET. Um, cool. Hi, MSX. Well, you may want to adjust the hinges. Um, I'm sure I'll probably adjust the hinges. How, how do you mean? Like, how do they look incorrect? Um, I always fuck up hinges. That's another thing, like, I've found. They always... They, there's something that I overlook in design, and then I end up, like, moving them farther away, or up, or, or some shit. Point being, I'm bad at them, but, um, I've done them in the past on things. Um, I just, I know, I know that it's something that I could not stick the landing of on the first try. It makes sense as I put it there is nothing. Um, as long as it doesn't, uh, desensitize you from reality. Uh, Mr. Bong's lab. I am super desensitized from reality. <laughs> I think I'm- I don't know, I think I've crossed this threshold of being, like, disassociated from, like, reality. And I have been for a very long time. It's your way to come to terms with your newly discovered sexual central release. Yes, it is. Uh, Z -Z 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 -S path. Yes, it is a way to come to terms with a lot of things. I think this whole project is really me um, unpacking baggage from like life in a way that feels healthy and productive, maybe. But yeah. Track to start. Did it fit how they need? So the... F I don't know. They'll probably get tweaked. The hinges, that is. Um, Anyhow, I'm going to set up that print file real quick and then run that back to the printer. Um, oh god, my desktop is a mess. I apologize. I'm navigating. Wait, I have multiple desktops. I have a Mac. What am I doing? Ah, I always forget to use that. There we go. Print bed. Okay. One, two, there we go. Are these the right way? No, of course not. All right, rotate around the red axis, axis, 180 degrees. You, same thing, rotate around the red axis, 180 degrees. Perfect. Why, thank you. Okay. And then these will be printed in... Uh be printed in filament settings. PLA. What? Why aren't you letting me? And this will be in silver. Okay. Sorry. I know this is boring. It's just necessary. Okay. Silver filament, Prusa PLA, the print settings, platter, infill. Okay. That's good. Export G code. Two. And I didn't stick the card in my cardy, Heidi Holy card reader do. There we go. Um, sure. Let's see how long this is gonna take. Please don't take forever. It's the only thing about the Prusa is it's like twice as slow as my other printer, or Mark's other printer. Hour and 40 minutes! Ugh! Okay. I guess. Not that I can do anything about it. Alright, I'll be right back.
Okay. I'm back. You know that. Here I am. Oh man. Checking the chat real quick. Oh. I don't know, I don't know. Gotta run. It's great seeing you. Talk to you this time. Oh, cool. Thank you for hanging out with me. Enjoy the rest of your day and or night, wherever you are. See ya. And so the... I think you are on the right track to start. I know that feeling will not much connection with reality here either. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I only use it when certain programs crash and I can't access the task manager so ha ah, yes, I usually only use it when something is going wrong too. <clears throat> I'm like very much only accustomed to the things that I had when I was a kid. Everything else that they've added since then, no matter how convenient, I just cannot remember to use it. CNC gave a time estimate. It's over, often over eight hours, but there is no way of knowing till it's finished. Yeah, no. That sucks. It sucks having no clue how long a thing is going to take and then sitting and suffering in the meantime. That's the one thing that sucks about 3D printing. It's nice because you don't have to actually physically make the thing yourself the entire time. You can just let the robot do it, but then you're just sort of on the hook waiting for it, which is fine. It frees up your time. Like you shouldn't, wh why would I even complain about that? Like I can go and draw or play a video game or something, but I think just like the, the knowledge of like, I'm not going to be able to answer any of my design questions for another like five hours is just this bitter truth that I have to face every day and it's agonizing. I think it's the difference between driving in not traffic for five hours versus going a short distance but being stuck in a traffic jam for five hours. It's like, would you rather drive for five hours to get to a place far away or be stuck in traffic for five hours to get to a place that's five minutes away. I think it's the same same sort of metaphor between like physically making a part yourself or giving it to a CNC machine or a 3D printer to do. Ooh, Falcon Heavy launch. When's that? Of things to do. Yeah, I should be working on my comic, but I'm not because I'm bad. Okay, I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna finish that concept sketch that I keep pulling up because I've changed it a bunch and I wanted to reflect what I'm doing right now so that I have it for posterity. Posterity. I don't even know what the word is. Posteriority. Um, okay, down, there we go, okay, so this is the back, I'm gonna leave that alone for now, so I'm going to lighten this outline, or darken this outline up a bit more so you can see it, so this is the, oh, I even have a side. Nice. Oops. You can't see it, but this is a, uh, I guess that's a side view, kind of. But we're going to do the front. I started with these. Okay, so I've got these. Triforces of suction. Let's stick these in a folder and call it Triforce of Suction. And then the previous version was this. Oh, it took away the neck. We can't have that. There we go. I don't know what you'd call this. I think this is just like the uh, the stent mesh bag. So this was the uh, what I was thinking a week ago. <laughs> um, last weekend, not the one that we just got out of, but the one previous to that. 
And this was what we were talking about outside uh, in the backyard over beer, was the, the stent mesh. Um, and then this is the syringe version, Triforce of Suction. There we go. So this is what I'm doing right now. So I'm going to actually get rid of those and draw some nice versions of the thing that I'm doing. This is over 10 years old now. I've had this thing since I was in college. Yes, it's, it's served me so well. It's probably my favorite tool next to the calipers. Although Mark has had to resolder the USB connector on the side probably about two dozen times now. It is a, uh, it has been through hell. And I'm not even very rough to this thing. Like I, I treat it very gingerly, but I do plug and unplug it probably a zillion times a day. <clears throat> Let's see. So there is going to be a cup here. There's going to be a cup here. Uh, does anybody else have shutter? I think I should bring this up. This is has nothing to do with what I'm working on, but does anybody have it's a it's a horror movie streaming service. It's like exclusively for horror movies. The other one is kind of um the back is such. Um I bring it up because uh there's this horror movie critic who just started his uh, his own weekly show and he's been doing uh, movie criticism for quite a while. His name's Joe Bob Briggs. I recommend him to everybody. Every time I, I meet complete strangers out in the wild, I'm like, you need to watch this guy's show. He's amazing. Um, he just premiered his first, uh, I guess, episode? like last Friday, and uh, this past Friday was his second episode, and he does a double feature every Friday streamed live on Shudder, and he just talks and drinks beer and sort of critically analyzes uh, horror movies from the 80s. So he, uh, he knows a lot about them. He addresses them as if they're proper, you know, film, films, you know, works of art and he talks about everything from how they were made to the people who made them, the actors who were casted, like any any interesting tidbits that there are to know um, about the, the film, he kind of discloses them. Um, every 20 minutes he'll like butt into the movie and then talk for about five or ten minutes about what's going on so far and go back and he uh, Again, does two movies every Friday now, and it's like the best, most amazing thing to do <laughs> on a Friday night if you're like us and just want to cut cut loose and chill on the couch and drink beer. So we uh, definitely couch potato it until about midnight or one watching these bad horror movies. I say bad, but they're really not. Um, they're pretty good, actually. It's not fair of me to say that. Um, that's Joe Bob Briggs. It's called The Last Drive-In. So if any of you are at all interested in horror movies from the 80s or just horror movie criticism in general, or just being entertained, I highly recommend checking it out. He is, he's my old man crush now. I love storytellers. Love, 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 love good storytellers. Um, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Pretty sure I am. Something like that. Get to look at me stare very intensely at this shape that I'm making. 
<sighs> Faceted soccer ball neck sucker. I like keeping drawings of all the stuff that I, I make, like concept sketches of like all the different stages I go through. Not only so that I can reference them later, but it's, I don't know, it's kind of a good storytelling mechanism, I guess? Because this is kind of, this is the story of this thing, such as it is. This is how it came to be. You can kind of track its evolution by looking at all of the uh, the drawings or the representations of the uh, thing, its concept, visual, visual storytelling. I'm always a lot happier when I draw too. It's one of those things in life that um, the more I do it. It seems to improve my mental health for some reason. I think of all the things in the world that I could possibly do, I enjoy drawing the most. But then again... That was my original purpose. I did this really weird thing this morning. I, um, I got an email from on behalf of the uh, one of the colleges I attended back when I was in college, um, I went to this this art school called the um, the School of the Art Institute of Chicago, which is the school of their big big art museum that they have in Chicago, and it's um I guess it's it's known as being one of the more swaggerly uh, art schools out there in the wild. Um, it's kind of got this prestige to it, but they sent me a, a survey. It was like one of these emails that went out to all of their alumni that they, they wanted feedback on their students' experience, which is a really weird thing to get from them, given that I think I was a student there nine years ago. It was like back in 2010, 2011, I, I attended school there. And it's been a minute, so everything that they asked, I don't really know if it applies anymore. But um, I did it anyway, and it was kind of amusing because it they kept asking me questions like, do I, do I donate or have I donated money to the school? And if I would consider donating money to the school, and if not, why? And I'm thinking to myself, like, I think when I went there, it was the most expensive college that you could possibly go to. Like, literally over, like, Harvard and any of those Ivy League schools. It was the most expensive college in the United States. And I'm thinking to myself, the people who went to your school probably don't donate to it because tuition literally cost a zillion dollars. And I was laughing to myself. Because <laughs> there's probably like five or six questions on this questionnaire to the effect of why aren't you giving the school additional money? And I'm crying inside answering these questions, like in a half asleep stupor, drinking my coffee, thinking about next section. And like, I have nothing negative to say about the school. Like, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now, or I, I wouldn't have gotten to doing what I'm doing now as quickly if I hadn't gone there. But, um, I don't know. Like, I have very neutral things to say about the school as an institution if that makes any sense. Why is this wet? <laughs> Why? Why is this wet? <laughs> uh, no. But, um, yeah, it was at SAIC where I, um, I was prompted to start making robots, and I've said this on streams before, but um, I was an illustrator. I did printmaking and stuff. I drew things and did designy stuff, uh, concept art stuff, uh, before 
ever prompted by anyone to actually make a robot, but um, I was really into mechanical drawings and circuit, like schematics and circuitry and the motif of um, everything involving robotic design. And they had an art tech department there and one of the heads of one of the departments that I was part of said, you know, if you like doing this stuff so much, like you like drawing it, why don't you just do it? And I think that if someone hadn't posed the question to me while I was there, I don't know when I would have gotten around to doing it. So it is very important that I went to the super, super expensive college. I just don't want to give them any more money. They also asked a bunch of questions about um, whether or not I thought the uh, school was prestigious. They're asking me about how the uh, how the world perceived me having gone to the school. Like things to that effect. Like I forget the exact questions, but they're they're very interesting. Uh, <laughs> questions to ask that were kind of indirectly probing it whether or not um, well, what my perception of having gone there was or what the other people's perception of me was having gone to that school which was kind of a weird vain shallow sort of thing to want to know about um, it was amusing I think back fondly to college, but I'm very much glad that it is over, because it was very painful. <sighs> and the entire time I was wondering to myself why... I'm sorry I haven't looked at the chat in a while. I'm just trying to get some headway on this before I... pure back up. Um... Painful. But yeah, I had the most amazing classes while I was there. It was a pretty awesome experience. It's just, again, very expensive and Chicago's kind of cold. It's not where I'd want to spend the rest of my life. Okay, so those I drew, they pretty much map directly to the uh, trapezius muscle on this drawing, which is that, uh, that nice triangle muscle that sits above your collarbone, connects to your neck. Um, I'm thinking this is roughly where those are going to go. Um, this is probably going to be a hell of a lot bigger than I drew it. So if I turn one of these off... I should I actually put these on separate... No, I'll worry about that later. This one is probably going to be up a bit higher, so like... Probably gonna be more like that. My guess. And then this thing. I'll just combine these because fuck it. Um, no! Why did you do that? Um,. This thing's probably going to be more like this. That is to say, the angle's probably going to be a little bit different. Come on. Why? Okay, so it's probably going to be a bit more like that. You can merge these two and stick this. Probably gonna be angled more like that, and right here. I think that's probably a bit more accurate versus that. I don't know, maybe not. I'll keep both. 
for the time being. Eh, whatever. We'll see. There will be wires and tubes coming off of each of those. Something like that. Hmm. I'll check the chat here in a second. I don't mean to completely abandon you guys. I need like a voice to text, but that would be like the worst thing on the face of the earth. I know I would regret that decision like immediately. I don't like any of those. Hmm. I'll leave it like that for now. All right, I check chat. I do a good. Here we go. Oh, hi, Polis Squalis. Welcome to the uh, the stream hangout session. Um, these need to be adapted. Uh -oh, I gotta scroll up. Hmm. If it piece comes out, it is. The waiting is frustrating. Re referencing back to when we were talking about letting machines do the work for you. Yes, the waiting sucks, but when you pull a finished piece off the print bed, it's the nicest, most gratifying feeling, especially when you assemble them and they just work. Ooh, Falcon Heavy, thanks for the reminder. Yes, I need to look that up too. I wish I had a machine that could do my packing for me because I keep putting it off. Yes. <laughs> I wish there was machines for a lot of stuff I don't want to do. Looking thing at the back, talk about the choker. There won't be anything left of your neck. Yes, it will. It's going to be kind of like a, a cowl, I guess, something that is going to take up the whole neck area. It's going to be chunky. I think that's the point. It's going to look something, something of a Hellraiser-esque type uh, apparatus. And yeah, jo Joe Bob Briggs, going back to that rant that I gave, he's he's pretty great. Like, I'm really not into watching things on TV. Like, I don't watch shows, I don't watch movies. Like, M Mark and Matt and my friends have to literally, like, practically hold me down physically on the couch and force me to watch things. It's the only way that I get content pushed into my face is, like, through alcohol and my friends just really putting a lot of pressure on. And he made me watch an episode of Joe Bob's, uh, one of his specials, like, over the holiday season, and I really enjoyed the first one, and after the second, which I asked for, I was hooked. So, um, it's, it's a thing now. And they're only getting better, which is also good. USB, USB adapted, and you could leave it in until the wear out of minimal wear and time to equipment. Uh... A different USB socket in it, maybe a type B. I could. I could. I do need to switch it out. It might once it finally bites it, I might look into a more permanent hack to fix the problem. With the tranquility of five hour CAD session sometimes. Yes. It is nice. I do miss working on my comic because I miss days that were completely dedicated to do drawing a comic page. Yeah, they should definitely ask how the student loans are coming first. It seemed very um, weird and insensitive, I guess, to get it, given the questions they were asking. And any time they asked for honest feedback, I just skipped those questions, you know, where you could like actually type things into a field. And I'm thinking to myself, nah, you really rather not know what I think. And then I would skip it, which is when they probably need the feedback, but I kind of just, I don't 
don't know. It was a weird thing. I don't know why I did it. Like, I, I literally don't know why. I think it was for my own half-awake amusement. Um, do I have a lot of debt? Um, only in the context of school. <laughs> only, only there do I have student debt, yes. It was, uh, it was very expensive to go there for a year. Um, <laughs> to the, to the extent of, I don't know if I would recommend it to people. Like, I think that the experiences I had there were absolutely vital for me to get to where I am now as a person in my mind, like the way that I am now, I couldn't have achieved this without the experience of going there and literally being repulsed by certain things that I saw. Like I had such an adverse of like reaction to certain things about what I came to know about the art world there that I wouldn't have gotten put on my path doing what I am now if I hadn't went there and absolutely hated certain things. And I don't really know how to tell them in a survey that without sounding awful, but that's kind of what the school served for me. It, it, it gave me a clear idea of what type of artist I knew I needed to become. And it was not the kind of artist that they were trying to crank out of their mold, if that makes any sense. <laughs> it gave me an idea of what I, I knew I didn't want. And sometimes that's that's what it's about. But it was an expensive thing to learn. Um, I'm still catching up on chat. I'm sorry. Got cold there. Yeah, that's funny. It is like an emotional hack, which I kind of resent. Uh, looking to exploit a human element for money. Same thing with cold calling undergrads. Yeah, it's shitty. Uh, but we, this part will be on your body. You kind of don't have much mass neck muscles. Yeah, I don't. Um, I do not have a giant trapezius. You're correct. Um, so on this drawing, it's kind of like folding over the muscles in like a concave way. I realize that this is probably going to be a bit more convex. Um, if it does work, which it might not, um, but if it does, I'm probably going to hold it on my skin and then take a picture of what it looks like and how it lays on my actual like concave shape of this part of my neck and then I'll probably look at it and redraw it because it's difficult for me to visually process right now but for now this is generic enough to to act as a marker of the this point in time um ah uh, Sleep well, you in Spain. Strip on stream is about 52 minutes. Uh, okay. Then I'll probably end the stream and then we can all catch that Falcon Heavy launch here coming up. Chonk. I want to know what the repulsive things are. Is it worth making a video on that? Oh no, what repulsive things was I talking about? I don't remember now. Necklace style for college grad, I sympathize. Uh... Oh man, what repulsive things was I talking about? I don't remember. Eh, doesn't matter. Ugh. Oh, eyes are getting juicy. I'm gonna go check on that print really quick, actually, just to make sure that it's not doing anything awful. It's usually a good thing to do. It's another thing that's really disappointing about those five hour prints is like when you set the printer to go and you leave and you keep yourself occupied by, 
you know, focusing on another task, and then you finish it, and you go back to the printer with the expectation that, that there's gonna be a finished print sitting there waiting for you, and there's not. There's just like a fucking pile of filament and chunks. That is a shitty feeling. I hate that feeling. Ah, the university things. Um, it is. Like, I, since you mentioned it, like the, the fart video, um, so there's, there's three more that I want to do that are kind of more like foundation-y type videos where I'm talking about more general stuff. And then after that, like there's a lot of really specific personal things that I want to talk about just in regard to um, the art world as I've come to know it and understand it based on my personal experience in college and everything that came to follow after that because I had kind of an unconventional uh, run, I guess. Like, I've been, I have a 10 year history in art academia. Like, I've been in art school since I was uh, 14. Like, when you, I went to a art uh, magnet school here in Las Vegas that uh, at the time was one of the, I think, top 10 high schools in the country. It was like very pinkies up. Um, and I got a really good education there. I was super lucky because um, I think our city, our state, is like one of the lowest for uh, college or um, high school. Um, either I think it's the highest for dropout or the lowest for um, test scores or I don't know there's something something is awry with uh, my state as far as high school education goes but um, I lucked out like I, I got to go to this art school and I've had a lot of art pushed in me throughout the course of my life and I have a lot of things that I want to say about that because um because I can. So I'm thinking now that I've got all of my all of my grant writing and proposals and stuff pushed out into the universe and I'm a bit freed up to continue work on Shibon like I am now, I am going to crank out some um, more fart videos. And I think I'm I, I started uh, formatting a part of my blog for just fart articles. So I'm gonna start writing farticles. <laughs> Yes, I'm gonna start writing farticles. Um, they won't be videos at first. I'm going to just sort of write like a page or two about certain things like like art school and like the art scene here or there um, in certain contexts as I've come to know them and just push those out into the world. And then maybe they'll become videos eventually, but I think it's better that some of these things start as writing first before they become videos or I rant. Um, yes. Yes. So you understand McBong Lab, all about that, that pain. Pain of having something go wrong and having to fix it. But yeah, I, um, I have a lot of really weird stuff to say about contemporary art <laughs> and concept development and just art in general. Um, I don't know. I'm the only person I know here in Vegas that is an art person. Like, everyone makes stuff. Everyone's a maker. But no one I know has an actual, like, formal art background. Everybody that I associate with is either like a, a mechanical engineer or a, an electronics engineer or a um, some some sort of pr practical, pragmatic designer. But I don't have any real life friends who also do philosophy or make art stuff with the intent of exhibiting it or. Um, presenting it in a fine art context, um, which isn't necessarily important that I do, but it does leave me feeling very lonely, like um, isolated, I guess, which goes back to we were talking about disassociation <laughs> earlier. Um, I don't know. I feel like an other in my life, kind of. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna check on that print because I said I was gonna do that. And I'm not gonna unplug this because I don't want to break the USB port again. So I'm gonna very gently set it on my laptop and then I'll be right back.
Okay, I don't have a pile. Yes! It's still going. Um, it says I have an hour left, so it probably won't get assembled on this stream, but I will most certainly post pictures on everything once I put my little... my suction triangle together, my Triforce of Suck. Meh. We need another printer. Um, I would totally watch those. What about a fractal accelerator? A what? Oh, a particle accelerator. I like that. A particle accelerator. There's a, a residency that just opened up uh, at CERN that I might apply for. And I've, I've applied for their residencies twice before this. And one submission was super, super serious and like, overthought and then the second time i applied mark and i um we put together a proposal because we, uh, we we proposed building a um large hot dog collider an lhc <laughs> like literally like we we proposed making a, a machine that launched hot dogs or sausages at one another and then we were going to f film in a uh, high speed the sausages hitting one another head on and film what happened when they like exploded. So um, we actually <laughs> wrote a real, a real fucking art like residency proposal and put together a video for a large hot dog collider. Um, and it's ridiculous. So um, <laughs> If I apply for this residency, I'm like curious as to whether or not that institution will be like, oh, that's the crazy fucking girl who applied with the hot dog machine. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but I'm probably gonna do it anyway. I don't I don't know what I would pitch though. I don't really have anything that fits with that right now. Um oh uh Ms. Ms. Kale, the printer I'm using is a Prusa. MK3 and Adam answered that. Thank you. Yes, the Prusa is great. I got one on her. Cool. I'm glad you enjoy it, Adam. It's a good printer. Like they're they're amazing. Amazing, amazing. Like I really want to get another Prusa. The MK3 is great. Like I I think just the the fact that if the filament breaks, it pauses the print and beeps at you until you come in and refeed the filament and then fix it and press go and then it starts the print where it paused because it's smart and i can't tell you how many prints over the past like seven years i've lost because the filament just cracked because pla gets brittle and it does that and then it just stops and you don't know so you wait again like the five hours for that piece to, to finish and you think you're gonna come to your printer and have a part waiting for you and there's half a part it just gets halfway through, and then it just stops, and there's nothing. And then you know what happened immediately when you look at it, because there's no filament coming out of the extruder like it's supposed to, and you just, you hate everything. You want to, like, pop the part off the bed and throw it across the room, but you don't, because you're civilized. Hmm. I would definitely. Cylindrical water protein casings. Yes. See, I'm glad you think that's cool too. Like we we thought so. Like Mark and I were actually pretty serious about this. Like the hot dog. Clay, it sounded like a like a ridiculous dumb thing. Like we were just being trolls, but we were actually pretty fucking serious about doing it. I think if we would have gotten the money to build the machine, we would have like definitely taken a summer and done it. Especially if we got to do it at CERN. In fact, like, I think it's worth revisiting it and doing another application with that exact idea, so maybe we'll do it again. It's been like... It's been like two... two or three years? It's been two years since we applied with that, so I don't know. Maybe there'll be a new jury of people that we can awe with our weirdness. Uh, big feature too. I know I agree. It, the filament pausing feature is great. Like I, I can't tell you how many. No, there we go. I can't tell you how many 
thing. Like, like we have a we have a bin in our workroom of failed prints, basically, which I think everybody does. I don't like the way that looks. We'll just leave it like this for now. Um, but it's huge, and it's mostly um, Delta robot parts. But we have a million, a million things like failed, broken, incomplete parts in the other room. And I don't throw them away because I do kind of want to recycle them and be a good human being. I don't want to just shit all over the world with my, my garbage. But um, I'm not really quite sure what I'd do with them yet. Okay. Oh god. But 3D printers are the best thing in the world. I always talk about this. I think every stream I go on a, a rant about how wonderful they are and how they completely changed my life and everyone else's life that I know. I remember we had one in Chicago. Like they had one that was available to their students to use, but they charged some stupid, like inordinate amount in order to print a part. So I think the uh, the people at SAIC who um, they, were, they had a major called. Well, first of all, SAIC was cool because there were no majors and there were no prerequisites for anything. Like, you could literally go there and take any class you wanted whenever you wanted, and it all counted towards your um, BFA. So, um, I ended up the only the only reason I was able to go from illustration and printmaking to robotics was because the school was formatted that way. Um, the people who went there and focused on designed objects had to use this 3D printer that they had, and it was one of those really big industrial ones, and I think they're still paying it off. So in order to uh, print the parts that you needed to for your final critique or whatever, it would end up costing you like $100 just to print a tiny little plastic part on this printer, and they charged you, which was crap. And I thought that that was just how much it cost to use a 3D printer back then. And then um, pretty much like immediately after I left um, college in Chicago and moved home, I found out that um, Maker, the first MakerBot had come out ever, uh, the Replicator one. And um, Mark had one, it's, we still have it, it's in the back room. And it was the first desktop 3D printer I'd ever seen. And it took me like a year from the time that I moved home from college to the time that I met Mark and saw the printer to uh, start using them. So there was this year window between having machine shop and having 3D printer where I had nothing and I just made shit out of like, gar like garbage. Like I literally used garbage until I found out that there were 3D printers and then that redefined how I made things pretty much for the rest of my life up until now. Um, it's like the one thing that I don't think I could live without. Like if I had to function in the professional capacity that I do right now doing what I do without one, I, I don't know if I could. I don't know what that would even be like. <sighs> I'm sure that's the case for a lot of people. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm craving soup. Sorry, I know that's totally random. 
I'm like, I have a weird taste for, like, Japanese ramen right now. It's another place I want to go back to so bad. Like, last year I got to go to Tokyo. I was fortunate enough to get to actually finally go there and experience it. And now, all I, all I can think about, or all I want to fantasize about, is going back. Has anybody on this or um, that's hanging out with me right now been to Japan? And if so, where? Like, what what sort of things would you recommend checking out? Because like I I only had so much time there, so I had to kind of pick certain things and leave out others. And I do definitely intend to make a pilgrimage back there to see more things. Because one of the stupid things that I didn't do. While I was there, that I really hate myself for, is that I didn't have sushi when I was in Japan. Which is insane, right? Like, who the hell goes to Tokyo and doesn't get sushi? This girl. I went there. I ate a ton of really good food. Like, I did, like, eat a metric fuck ton of, like, new and interesting food. But I did not have Japanese sushi, and for that, I feel like a heel. I had this weird, um... Alright, I'm gonna check the chat. I had this weird, uh, it was a row. So one of, one of the places we went to, um, I, I was there for a philosophical summit, which is like, pfft, and swanky sounding as hell. Um, ours, ours Electronica holds this uh, summit called the Future Innovators Summit, and it's basically this session where they get a bunch of artists together to talk about um, specific topics in like a like a discussion forum. And it's really intensive, and it's over a period of days that you just mouth mouth vomit continuously for hours, and. Um, it's held in a public location so that people from the wild can walk up and participate if they want to. Um, like a, like a old forum from like, I don't know, Greece or Rome, back when they used to do the active philosophy doings. Um, me and the other people who were in Japan for this summit went to this smokehouse one of the nights that we were there, and they smoked everything over this giant hay pit. Um, so everything had this very specific uh, flavor from the thing that they were burning, that, that, that hay or that straw, that plant that they, they smoked, burnt, whatever. Um, one of the things that they brought to the table um, that somebody ordered was this like tiny, it almost looked like sausage. It was like this red colored, dark, like dark red, thin sausage looking thing that was sliced in like little coin size pieces and I thought it was a meat until I put it in my mouth and the texture was totally wrong. It was a um it was like squishy almost. It was like very soft and it was smoky. It was definitely fermented and aged and it had a flavor unlike anything I, I've ever tried in my life. So I'm not even gonna attempt to describe to you what it was like. But it was um it was roe egg and it was a stuff called um mentaiko. And it was, it was compressed roe egg in a tube form that I think was fermented and smoked so that it kind of like congealed and became a solid. And then they sliced these tubes of roe egg, like those little tiny, um, this type of egg, <laughs> this type of egg. Um, they cut it up and you could actually eat it as like a solid. And it was fucking delicious. It was one of those weird happy accidents that I had while I was traveling that I probably would never have done or tried on my own if I was alone. So it was because I was with a group of people that knew things I didn't that I even got to try this new food. But the whole trip was like a bunch of little micro experiences in the culinary world like that. So I want to go back just to have more of those experiences where I'm trying food that I normally wouldn't. And I had takoyaki, which was great. Um, and I'm gonna 
check the chat real quick. Get, <laughs> get hot dogs to Mach 1 with compression, compress, compressed air and a vacuum combo if you freeze them first. We talked about that. Yes. See Mythbusters supersonic ping pong ball for details. Haha. <laughs> Mythbusters, lol. Keep holding them until desktop filament extrudes everything. I melt my failed prints and molds and make coasters out of them. That's a good idea. Nate and his junk. It's good to re recycle all of your failed prints. Sorry, did it too fast. You'll get a wave down inside the hot dog and a water hammer out the other end. At least that's what I want to see in slow-mo. Deal. I don't even care if the sausage liquefies on the way out of the tube and it just splatters like meat juice all over another cannon that's firing meat juice. Like if I can see that happen in slow motion, then I would be completely satisfied with the project. And just building like two self like cannons facing each other that are expressly meant to deliver sausage at high velocity towards one another. Like if I get to do that in my life, I'd be happy. Fuck it, I'm gonna do another application for that. God damn it. If you're gonna spend time doing something, you might as well do something you like, right? Best bet for preventing overhicking, safe release valve or some sort. Um, that's a good question. I'm not sure, uh, to answer your uh, STU cook son, to answer your question on a, a safe release valve, I think for the syringes, it might not be necessary. I don't think, because um, they don't really pack that much of a punch to begin with. I think the uh, the slight grip and then the release is enough to create the sensation that I'm going for, but there's not enough um, suction created by the syringe that it's going to actually like um, cause a hickey. Because like, even when I really cranked it all the way back and forth, like repeatedly the other day when I was testing on my arm, at most it left like a little pink circle that would go away after like a couple of seconds. So I don't know. If I, if I did use a vacuum pump, then yeah, a safety release would definitely have to be a thing. Oh. Well, See ya, Pulis Squalis. Thank you for joining. I'll talk to you later. Oh, and hi, Sweden. Hi, Zed Oz in Sweden. I'm glad you enjoy the project. It's going, it's going fun. I'm enjoying it. It's, it's been a good thing. I applied for this residency in Paris um, that was held by Google. It was, um, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but it was a uh, Google has this material, this jacquard material that's like a capacitive, um, conductive fabric that allows you to sense things like gesture or touch. And I was I proposed working on Shibon in the capacity of uh, integrating this this fabric into some aspect of the uh, Shibon wearables, and I was really excited because I thought that I would have a good chance at maybe being considered for it, and I didn't even hear- like, I heard back from them, but I just got a no. So whatever it is that I'm doing is obviously not what they're looking for, but I, I was kind of bummed about that. Of everything I applied for, it was the residency I was the most excited about possibly getting. Um, it would have gotten me out to Paris again to visit that culture, which I do- I do enjoy the city of Paris quite a bit in spite of certain things. Um, and I would have gotten a new toy to play with regarding Shibon. That would have been kind of cool. So I'm kind of kind of disappointed about that, but frees me up for other things. Um, but anyhow, I'm gonna check the uh, OBS. It's still going. Wow, this is going on three hours. Gosh, thanks for keeping me company this long, guys. For those of you who are here. 
Um, I think this is all I want to do on this drawing for now. What are these? Oh. That's the back. That's the side. Uh, I don't know. What else is going on in my life here? Um, difficult to say. Hmm. I think those would be about there. Draw straight lines. But yeah, Tokyo is great. Mark's been there multiple times. When I got the, uh, when I found out I was going to Tokyo for the summit last year, there was like this brief period of time where he really wanted to go with me, and I, I had to kind of very politely suggest no, he shouldn't go. Like, I really wanted to go on the trip by myself to experience. A city like that for the first time on my own and I definitely do not regret that decision at all and I kind of recommend that anybody else who goes there does the same like there's a there's a quality of traveling that you don't get when you have to go with even just one other person like there's something amazing about waking up in a new place alone and being able to do whatever you want and not having to consult with somebody at all. I think waking up there on my own and not talking to anybody and just going out and doing and going wherever the wind took me was like one of the most exciting feelings to go and do. And doing it in Japan of all places is like the best best place to do something like that because you, you do feel like a, a stranger in a strange strange land because <laughs> everything's vastly different than visiting any place in Europe. It's... it's... I don't know. It is a departure from what you're comfortable with. But not so much of a departure that you feel scared or unsafe or anything like that. Japan's like probably the safest city I've ever been in. in Japan. Tokyo is the safest city I've ever been to in my life. Like you could... I, I would feel comfortable leaving, like, my wallet in the middle of a busy street for, like, a day and then coming back and getting it. Somebody would likely chase you down and give it back to you because it's just culturally how it is there. People are nice. I miss that. <sighs> so I'm thinking... I have an itch to play. Um, anybody play the original um, Portal video game? That's like old now. Um, I'm like dying to play that again for some reason. I just have like a bug up my butt to go through that that specific experience of playing that game. Like I have a really strong memory of the first time that I went through it. And for some reason, I'm craving that. Speaking of, tomorrow's Friday. It's Joe Bob Briggs night again. See, we, we watched it last night, but we were catching up on um, not being able to see it live on the actual Friday when it was broadcast. So we were playing catch up last night, but it was, um, it was a good one. I don't know how I'm gonna do the rack and pinion thing. It's gonna be interesting. I ran into issues with, um, I originally used a syringe for Noodle's salivary system in his foot. Um, 
in like one of the very first iterations of his foot. And I had issue like space issues with the plunger of the syringe and actuating it. And I'm curious, depending on how I angle these, whether or not that's going to be an issue. Eh. Whatever, I'm not gonna worry about it right now. All right, kids. That's not what I wanted. There. All right. Well, if the SpaceX stream is starting, then I think I will cut everyone loose and I'm gonna catch it myself. Oh, greetings. Oh, greetings to Iceland. Oh, I thank you. I'm happy you enjoy the, the project. I'm happy you like it. I wanna go to Iceland too. Oh my God. Speaking of traveling and Sweden for that matter. Wallet means a new stalker. Yes, in the US, a lost wallet does mean a new stalker, but not in Tokyo, and probably all of Japan for that matter. Uh, and I do need to play Half Life. I haven't done that yet. So hopefully, I don't know, in the near um, future, I can get around to playing that as well. All right, the launch is in 15 minutes. Everybody, Enjoy enjoy the Falcon Heavy stream. I'm gonna catch it as well. Thank you for keeping me company. It's been a it's been a good one. Like this was a good brainstorming session. I feel I feel happy. But um I'm gonna I don't know. I'm gonna take a break and watch the thing and I will post pictures on Twitter and Discord, which I'll post the link to before I jot off. Um I'll take pictures of how it turns out. And I'll let you know whether or not this thing that I designed uh, worked or not. And one last time, that is this thing right here, which I just drew in that illustration. So it's a uh, hinged Triforce looking piece, and each one of those circles is going to hold one of these suction cups. So we will see. The verdict is not out yet. You guys can take your bets. <laughs> I, my, my bet is it's going to kind of work and kind of not but it might work perfectly. Who knows? But yeah, enjoy the enjoy the launch. And again, thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day and or night. Bye.